Hi everybody, welcome back. Uh, this is part 20 and the final part of the Tamiya 132 scale Mosquito build. I've uh, spent the rest of this week uh, finishing off those little uh, details on the model and it's often those that take uh, a lot of the time I thought I'd be done uh, last weekend but uh, it's taken a good few hours to get these last bits and pieces on. So I left the model last week uh, needing to fit the propellers, uh, finish the bombs off and fit them into the uh, bomb bays and wing racks, uh, fit all the transparencies uh, and prepare the canopy. So that's the work that we're going to be doing uh, for this final video. So let's get started and get this one done. Okay I'm going to kick off this week with the uh, wing racks So obviously we've a couple of these to build up and then we'll get the bombs sorted out and get these racks fitted. These are the bombs that uh, I looked at actually a few episodes ago when I checked out the MDC resin bombs. And even though the MDC bombs uh, look a bit more accurate, uh, I found them really difficult to build. The fins, when you installed them, had a strange angle to them and I tried to mess about with them for quite a while to get them to look right but I couldn't get the fins to run parallel at the tail here so uh, I'm going to have to stick with the uh, Tamiya bombs which aren't too bad and I can use some of the MDC brass to uh, enhance them a little bit so we'll see how we do with them one thing you can do with the Tamiya bombs is just thin the fins out a little bit. So just a gentle sanding around the edges just to give the impression of a slightly thinner sheet of metal. You don't have to go too mad with that. It just thins them out ever so slightly, just gives a slightly better look to them. Okay, so they're ready apart from the fuse veins on the uh, back of the bombs. And actually, uh, when I did the review of the MDC resin bombs, I talked a bit about the research I'd done into the loadout for the Amiens Raid. And I worked out from uh, various sources that the loadout for the Amiens Raid was uh, all 500 pound bombs but uh, two of them were high explosive and two were semi-armor piercing and from some photographs of armor as loading mosquitoes at Hunsdon which was the home base I determined that the likelihood was that the semi-armor piercing bombs were carried on the wing racks and the high explosives in the uh, bomb bay so that's how I'm going to load mine out. The difference is that uh, the semi-armor piercing bombs didn't have a nose fuse on for obvious reasons. They, uh, with an armor piercing bomb it would be a bit superfluous to have an arming vein on the front. So I'll just be fitting those to the rear. And for the high explosive bombs I'll fit a an arming vein to the nose of each of these as well as on the tail. The other difference between them was the markings on the bombs but in all the photographs I've seen of 500 pounders being loaded 
it's very difficult to see any markings on them at all. Uh, and that's because the bombs were stored in dumps and rolled uh, onto the trolleys from the dumps. So they were getting muddy and dirty and you always see photographs of dirty, muddy bomb bodies. The tails were added uh, afterwards, so the tails weren't stored in the bomb dumps, just the main body of the bomb. So they were cleaner and that's how I'm going to do mine. So I'll uh, paint the tails of these in a bronze green colour and I'll just really dirty the bodies up. I might put a hint of some markings on them uh, but I'll just paint those over and uh, make them really scruffed up. So uh, we can get all those parts primed. And I'll paint the racks. The thing again with the racks is to make sure that they're weathered uh, in line with the rest of the aeroplane. And actually when the bombs were being loaded there was a central panel to these racks. So this centrepiece uh, unfastened and the various pulleys to get the bombs hoisted onto the racks were inside here. Once the bombs were in position, the fairings were rep repositioned uh, and buttoned up. So the weathering on this centre panel would likely be different to the weathering on the rest of the rack. So that's what I'm going to try and represent on the model as well. But the first thing to do is to get all these parts primed up. OK, so uh, the bombs have been painted now in Tamiya Black Green is a fair approximation for the dark green used uh, by the RAF on its bombs although I'm not getting too hung up about it because as I said these are going to be weathered and dirtied up quite a bit. They've uh, also had a coat of gloss varnish and that's just in preparation for the decals. Uh, I'm going to use the Tamiya decals for the uh, nose bands which identified the filling on the bombs. And obviously they're different for the semi-armour piercing and the high explosive ones. So uh, we'll come to that when we've got the varnish to dry properly. Still a bit tacky, it's not ready for decals yet. So whilst I'm waiting for the varnish on the bombs to dry, I'll get some weathering wash on the spinners and back plates and the wing bomb racks. They've all been painted and gloss varnished. So I'm using MIG uh, Starship wash for this. It's uh, MIG 1009. I've used it right the way through the build for the weathering on the Mosquito. So uh, just for consistency I'll be using the same. As I think I mentioned in the last video that the important thing at this stage when you're adding these detail parts is to make sure that your weathering is consistent with the rest of the build because it's very easy to get it wrong and it stands out like a sore thumb if you've got detailed parts different to the rest of the airframe. Do the bomb racks as well. Okay, I'll just wait for all those to dry before cleaning them up with the cotton bud. Just start to remove this uh, weathering wash now just with this cotton bud. This MIG wash is nice because you can just play around with it until you get the sort of effect that you want. You can see there's plenty of it on the cotton bud there. Just allows you to Put some more back on. Take it off where you want it taking off. It's nice stuff. And then if I just check that against the airframe, on the underside of the wing in this case, it's uh, blending in. So I'm happy with that. 
just leave it to dry give it a coat of the light sheen varnish and then I can fit those onto the wings do the same now with the spinners and I'll just streak these backwards just towards the nacelle and uh, again just play around with the wash and just checking that next to the aeroplane just to make sure it's not going to stand out so I finished up the uh, propellers the sequence I used for these you remember that I sprayed them in the uh, superfine silver as kind of an undercoat really but my plan was to wear some of that away on the leading edges but uh, it didn't work I think the black overcoat was a bit too thick and also I started to get some yellow through because I painted the yellow tips first masked those off then the black so uh, it didn't quite go according to plan so what I've had to do is go in with a silver pencil this is a metallic uh, pencil and just worked around the leading edge of the propellers just to uh, take off the black on the leading edge there and to get a few scratches and dings rather than uh, drawing with the pencil if you like I just tap it on the surface and you'll find that you just get little sharp pricks of uh, silver to suggest the uh, metal and the paint wearing away above it so uh, that's all I'm going to do with those I don't want to go overboard with them and actually on camera it's quite difficult to see some of this weathering I've noticed when I'm editing that I think well gosh that looks really clean whereas in real life the weathering is much more apparent and these scratches and so on are much more apparent in real life than they are on video so i found it's uh, very difficult to show i don't know whether it's the uh, 4k camera work that uh, kind of washes the weathering out i don't know what it is but uh, it's certainly more apparent in real life Is there anyone else that hates putting decals on bombs, especially the ID bands? Good job we've only got four to do. And while I'm waiting for the uh, bombs to dry I'll get the uh, propellers and spinners finished now so these are fairly straightforward we've just got the back plates to fit and the spinners themselves so these have had a coat of the Alclad light sheen And these should just push on to the uh, front of the propeller here. I think Tommy have designed these so that you can remove the spinners to see the hub detail. But uh, I don't think I'll be bothering with that. I'm nearly finished these bombs now just weathering them up a little bit um, I've given them an overall coat of gloss varnish just to seal the decals in I ended up having to paint the uh, white band on the front of the semi armor piercing bombs uh, which I just did with a circle template just positioned over the uh, tip of the bomb there and 
painted white and then green again. So now what I want to do is add to the dark earth. I've just given it, I've just given each of these bombs uh, a light overspray of dark earth just on the bomb body. I'm not bothered about the tail unit just yet. And now I just want to give some splashes of uh, earth colour just to create uh, a mud effect really on the body of the bomb in streaks really. So I just want to dry brush uh, and I'm going to use some khaki, Tamiya khaki for this. So it's just a bit lighter than the dark earth. It'll just accentuate the uh, dirt a little bit more. I think they'll do. They'll look uh, suitably dirty. They'll need a coat of mat. I want to really dull them down. And I'll then mask off the tails and repaint the uh, dark green on the tails. Possibly with a bit of satin varnish just to uh, pick them out and see how that goes. So I've just gone back over with some of the black green on the tail after just masking each of the bombs up. So that's just freshened the tail unit up a little bit. Because as I said earlier they were added uh, once the bomb was ready to load onto the aeroplane. So at this stage I'll give those a coat of matte varnish then we can come back and fit the uh, arming vanes. Okay, so they're dulled right down now, and I used Alclad uh, flat coat for that. Uh, as you know, I use uh, Alclads for all my uh, aircraft finishes. So uh, they've come out, uh, I'm happy with those. Let's get the uh, arming vanes on now. These are the MDC uh, arming vanes. You don't get them in the Tommy kit. So this uh, piece that I'm trying to fold up now is basically a propeller and what I'm doing is folding the propeller vanes uh, into the centre of the piece. So here I'm just folding those vanes up and then I'll push them inwards towards the centre. So this is a drawing of what the uh, arming vane or pistol look like and that's what I'm building at the moment from the MDC photo etch. Now the purpose of the vane was that it acted as a propeller and as the uh, as the bomb moved through the air this propeller turned round it spun and it unscrewed it was attached to the pistol and it unscrewed the uh, pistol and that activated the detonator so obviously these could be set to different times or at least the pistol could be uh, to detonate the bomb at different uh, times depending on the sort of effect that you wanted. I think the fuse on the Amiens raid for these bombs was set to something like 10 or 11 seconds I can't remember exactly just put a little twist on the tail pistols. So with the bombs finished up it's time to get them in the bomb bay. So I'll start with uh, these which are the standard general purpose bombs. And uh, fit the wig racks now. I 
the uh, racks are handed so Tammy will give us uh, a key on these you can only fit them to one side the correct side okay put the uh, I'll put the armor piercing bombs on now And she is all loaded up at last. We'll uh, fit the propellers now and just a case of gluing the back plate onto the propeller and then the spinner will push onto the end like that. Tommy have designed this so that you could remove the spinner if you want but uh, mine are never going to come off again so I'm just going to leave them at that and then you remember we put a poly cap in these last week so they can just press onto the front of the aeroplane Okay, getting ready to do the last few bits and pieces now and what I generally do towards the end of a complicated build like this or a big build like this is to just list the little bits and pieces that I've got left to do and I just write them down on the bench and tick them off as I deal with them so it's just a case of running through the instructions one last time making sure that you've not left any bits and pieces on the sprue that you're going to need and getting them all prepped ready to fit so uh, I'll do those in a moment but uh, before then I just want to sort out the canopy which is an absolutely lovely piece of transparency in the Tamiya kit my version has the flat side window Tamiya also provide a separate insert for the bulged uh, side window the navigators window and uh, that's a bit of a hairy moment putting that in uh, but there's some really good connection points in the kit and just a drop of the Tamiya extra thin quick drying uh, sorted that out did that a while ago actually so uh, let's get this masked up now in the uh, Edward detail set, the brassing set, I got a set of uh, ready cut masks. Tamiya provides some masks for the uh, transparencies, but you have to cut them out. So uh, I'll save a bit of time and use the Edward ones. Okay, so all ready to go. So uh, first job, coat of interior green. Okay, medium sea grey now. Okay, so it's the moment of truth. Obviously the uh, grey and green is on. I've given it a coat of clear and then the uh, light sheen uh, varnish that I've been using for the rest of the aeroplane. That's just to bring it in line with the rest of the model. So I'll get the masking off and hopefully we won't have any touch-ups or too many touch-ups anyway.
not bad so far. I've got one or two little areas where the paint's got through. I always like to get the masking off as quick as I can. So this masking has been on for about two hours. And that's about as much as I like to leave them. So uh, it's not a bad result. Pretty happy with that. Just get rid of that bit of other spray. Okay, so uh, put that to one side. The canopy will be the very last piece to be fitted to the model. Okay, the transparencies now. And for this I'm using some canopy glue. Basically just a white PVA. And we have a spot at each end of the lamp, or the cover, and one under the light bulb. Make sure to get these the right way around. There is, uh, they are handed left and right, just so that they follow the contour of the wing. Then we have the landing lights. So again, just a spot of the canopy glue on the rim. I've test fitted these and they're an absolutely perfect fit. Canopy glue uh, will dry clear, obviously, so uh, we're not going to be able to see where we've actually attached those. Next, we've got the uh, beacons on the underside. So with these, I've just filled the recesses with some sparkling silver. That's a Tamiya lacquer acrylic, uh, followed by clear red, green and orange. And again, we've got some covers for those. So that's all the transparency is done. We've got the tail lamp fitted, the beacons, the uh, landing lights and the navigation lights on the wingtips. I've also fitted the pitot tube so I'm just working through my list of final jobs. Got the pitot tube on. Uh, I needed to remember this instrument cluster here. Uh, just on the front of the cockpit. I've also fitted the canopy release handle, the emergency release handle here yeah, just on the canopy framing. That's from the Edward Photo Etch set. Okay, the uh, next job is to finish the entrance hatch. So this has been painted uh, and gloss varnish. We've got some decals for the inside. There's a warning for the air screws at the bottom and something to tell you that that's the exit 
I'm sure the crew knew where to get out. And then there's a locking placard here for the handle. So we've got a bit of detail painting to do here. There's a couple of pouches to pick out and the lock itself. It's often these last little bits and pieces that take so much time to finish off. Just when you think you've done, you find something else to sort out. So here we've got the access door finished off. So I've given the part a wash with some of the Starship wash and MIG followed by a coat of the Alcloud light sheen as I've used on the rest of the aeroplane and then I've just gone back in and picked out the handles again in gloss yellow and gloss red so uh, that's ready to fit that's a really uh, tight fit so I'm going to leave that I don't think it's going to go anywhere. So with everything else uh, finished now, just the last job is to uh, fit the canopy. So I'll just give this a final polish. I'm going to use some uh, Tamiya modelling wax, which again is one of those difficult to find products in the UK. I think this canopy is probably the best I've ever fitted on any model I've ever built. Not only is it crystal clear, but it doesn't require any glue to fit it. It uh, just clips in. You can just hear a little click when it's in the right place. So the fit of that is so good, as I said, it doesn't require any cement. There are no gaps around the edge. So it's absolutely perfect. You couldn't ask for any more than that. We have a windscreen wiper and then that's it. We're all done. So I've got uh, the boarding ladder here. Tamiya provide an option to have this in the stowed position on the back of the door. This is obviously the extended one and that just hooks onto the sill of the entrance like that. And Tamiya provide a crew figure uh, climbing up the ladder, which I will put together actually. I might paint it at some stage. And you'll know from previous episodes that they also provide a pilot and navigator to sit inside the cockpit if that's what you wanted. I decided not to because they do take up quite a bit of space in a mosquito cockpit. It was a tight fit in there and putting figures in would block out a lot of the detail. So that's it. She's all done. And obviously I'll do the usual roundup of close-up photographs and we'll do the final set of pictures for the build okay so that's another one finished 
uh, and I'm really pleased with the result. Uh, you've got a great start with the Tamiya kit. It's one of the best kits I've ever built probably. Uh, the fit is absolutely fantastic. Uh, there's, I can't think of any problems in putting the kit together straight from the box. I made life a little bit difficult by attempting to build the uh, Edward Brassin engines which I couldn't get to fit or at least I couldn't get the engine bulkhead to fit into the tummy and the cells. So as you know if you've watched the rest of the uh, video series I abandoned that idea and I've ended up building one engine enclosed and the other Tamiya engine straight from the box more or less uh, on the port side. In terms of aftermarket this is really a kit that you'll get a great result with it straight from the box. You don't really need to buy any aftermarket for it. The one thing if I was doing this again uh, I would invest in the wheels probably because they're a slight improvement over the Tamiya items. I'd use the Edward Resin 20mm cannon pack and the 303s, the nose gun bay. I think they're also a big improvement on the Tamiya. The engines I wouldn't bother with at all. I'd just use the uh, Edward instructions, the brassing instructions, just to locate some of the pipework and maybe do some uh, scratch detailing on the engines next time. The fabric seat belts are also worth doing. The cockpit as you can see uh, on the finished model uh, it's got a big canopy you can see right down into the cockpit and particularly the crew seats and the fabric seat belts really add a lot to that area of the model. But apart from that uh, if you build it straight from the box you'll get a fantastic result and I'm sure you'd enjoy building the model as well. Very problem free. So I've got another 132 scale aircraft project uh, in the planning. It's going to be probably next month before I start that. That'll give me a chance to uh, hopefully come back to this Tamiya 48 scale P51B uh, which I'm building uh, for the ACES series that I'm starting. I hope to do that uh, over winter really or even in spring. So it's well delayed now so I want to get that finished. I don't like models hanging around on the bench. So in the interval between my 32 scale builds I'll finish that Mustang off. So I'll uh, get some photographs of the completed model uh, for a roll at the end of the video. If you've got the model uh, get it out from the attic or off the shelf uh, and build it. You won't regret it. It's a really uh, enjoyable experience. So I hope to see you for the next uh, 32 scale aviation build and also the completion of the uh, 48 scale Mustang coming up pretty soon. So take care everybody, look after yourselves, uh, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.